Hola amigos, welcome to Sanjineering. Growing up, I've pretty much always been interested in sciences, whether it's physics, chemistry, or even math. But when I was applying to colleges, I was kind of in the dark deciding on what to major in. I ended up choosing chemical engineering, so that's what this video is going to be about. Hello, and welcome to Advanced Chemical Engineering. I was actually pretty discouraged in high school, believing that I wasn't a science person or a math person. A lot of the times we get discouraged from following our passions because of experiences we've had with a person or even a teacher. Hey pal. You just blowing from stupid town? But I decided to stick with it anyway, and now I love what I'm doing. So today we're going to introduce the map of chemical engineering. This is an amazing and diverse field and covers topics in physics, biology, math, and of course chemistry. I really hope that this informs, educates, and even inspires some of you to at least consider pursuing STEM as a career. We really need more diversity in these fields. We need more women engineers, but again, that's a topic for another video. So before I keep ranting, let's get started on the map of chemical engineering inspired by Dominic Wallman. Short disclaimer, I'm still a college student, so check the description for any updates and check out my website. But I did my best to make sure that this is as accurate as possible. So an engineer is a person that likes to solve problems. Chemical engineers use principles of chemistry to do large scale production. That's pretty cool. What is that, a game? He thinks it's a game, <laughs> <laughs> lol. It's the engineer's job to make something that's affordable and efficient. That's called optimization. Whether it's large scale production of a chemical or doing something green to help the environment, Chemical engineers have to rely on creativity, teamwork, and a lot of brain power to solve these kinds of problems. Guys, my, my answer is accurate up to the 10,000th. Wow! Oh my god, really? First, I'm gonna discuss chemistry. What is the difference between a chemist and a chemical engineer? Same chemistry! <laughs> you might be watching this on YouTube or Facebook, which are pretty similar. They're both social media platforms which allow you to share content with the rest of the world. But if you ever spent any time with the two, you realize they're actually quite different. Same thing with chemi and chemistry. Although they both use the principles of physics and chemistry to solve the world's problems, they're actually quite different. A chemist is a person usually working in the lab, maybe doing a reaction on the small scale, but it's the engineer's job to mass produce that on a large scale. Now I'm going to put on my chemical reactions. Our reactants will be butter and three eggs. This whole thing is like our reactor. And this is our final product. Looks like we got a pretty good yield. Next, let's talk about math. Yeah, you guessed it, engineers do have to learn quite a lot of math, including algebra and calculus. Calculus is the type of math that allows us to make equations, just like algebra, but with things that are more complex, that are moving or even changing with time. This leads us into our next topic of computer science, which can allow us to solve these equations instantly. That's right, even chemical engineers have to know a bit of CS. I got it right under the 127 lines of code. Next, we're gonna talk about physics, which is the science of pretty much everything. Oh, first try! Engineers usually focus on classical physics, which we'll introduce to more topics later on. In my opinion, chemical engineering is actually more similar to physics than chemistry, because physics allows us to learn how to solve problems. So at this point, we discuss classes that both scientists and engineers have to take. Now we're going to talk about chemical process analysis. This is Chemical Engineering 101. Welcome to our laboratory. We will work to explode the lab. Process is a really quick crash course of chemi that covers almost three years of material in one class. This leads us into another branch of science called thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the math and engineering that studies the relationships between all types of energy. So without thermodynamics, we wouldn't have cars or even planes. <laughs> Chemical engineers usually have to study a lot of thermodynamics because of a principle called fugacity, which I will not get into in this video. Fugacity is the most wonderful, magical thing you can learn about. Next we have chemical kinetics, which allows us to predict how long it will take for a reaction to reach completion. This can be on a small scale, which can help chemists, like I said before, or on a large scale, which is more important for engineers. At this point, you're most likely in your third year and you'll be covering the trifecta of science. Transport Phenomena Name a more iconic trio. Transport Phenomena is the study of how things move in a system. For example, heat transfer. How do we study how heat flows in a system? In thermodynamics, we've learned about the energy, how much energy is required to heat this up. Now we can calculate how long it will take to heat up. Heat transfer is really interesting because we experience it every day. Next up is another form of transport called mass transfer. Mass transfer deals with not heat, but 
concentration. One example is if you have a cup of water and you add dye to it, you'll notice that it diffuses over time. And then over here you again have a gas-liquid interface over at the top, so only certain amounts of certain gas bubbles come out. Next we have fluid mechanics, which is an extremely diverse topic, which is the science and physics of how fluids flow. Again, this is extremely important as well for chemis because it allows us to predict the motion of fluid. Personally, this is my favorite because it's so diverse, there's so many different types of sciences, I love it. Next, we have separations, which again deals with how fluids interact with each other. If you ever put oil in a pot and then pour water over it, what happens? Well, you notice they begin to separate. This is extremely useful for chemists and chemical engineers because if they have a mixture of two substances, they want to separate what's not useful from their product. In the last year of chemical engineering, you learn about process dynamics and control. In the industry, there are tons of processes that chemical engineers have to deal with. Whether it's a valve or a pump, how is changing something like temperature or pressure going to affect your product? Is it going to help it or hinder it? Finally, senior design. Can you put all of these principles together to make some sort of new process or even an invention? Senior design is your chance to apply everything you've learned in three or four years to bring an outcome into the world. If you're going into industry, this is extremely useful because your employers will know how capable you are of working on a team and developing your own project. Or instead of going into industry, you can further your education in grad school and keep doing research on topics that have not been covered yet. For me, this is extremely interesting because you're doing things that no one has ever done before. To be honest, I'm really not doing you a justice with this video because there are so many more things that chemical engineering can go into. There are also different subtopics that I kind of sprinkled such as biology, material science, computer science, and even nanotechnology. These are just some of the subfields that can be their very own major but are incorporated into chemical engineering. Chemical engineers usually collaborate with different fields to work together to bring more science into the world. Personally, I love science and engineering because you're doing something that not only helps society, but it's really everywhere. I love talking about it, making videos about it. So although fields like chemical engineering may seem difficult, if you have the right motivation and mindset, you can get the work done and do well in the field. In my opinion, it's definitely a lot more fun than it is difficult. So be sure to share this with anyone that you think might be interested in engineering. If you enjoy this, comment what you want to see next and I will continue to talk more about these topics. Feel free to ask me any questions or make recommendations about what you want to see or you can check out my website or Facebook, Sanchineering. Yeah.